Welcome to another episode of Untold Legends, where we explore the stories found within the worlds of video games, movies, comics, and anything in between. Last time on the Mortal Kombat timeline, I covered the history of Sindel, Queen of Edenia, and sometimes unwilling wife of Shao Kahn. I detailed her creation and development as a character, from being a caring mother and benevolent queen, trying to defend her restored kingdom from invaders, all the way to her controversial change into a power-hungry empress that very much adored Shao Kahn and shared his bloodlust. Today we're going into the stories of two of the most beloved characters introduced in the 3D era of the series, and I mean beloved as sarcastically as humanly possible, Movado and Su Hao. While Movado himself is kinda cool and has a decently sized fan base, he has spent the years mostly unused, but Su Hao is widely seen as one of the worst characters the series has ever introduced, and they both made their debut in Mortal Kombat Deadly Alliance. Since they both have a fairly short history in the Mortal Kombat universe, and both have story elements that are intertwined with each other's journeys, I'm gonna bundle them up in one video, Mortal Kombat Timeline The History of Movado and Su Hao. During development, when ideas were being thrown around, originally Movado was conceptualized as a very different looking character, called Malvado, the Spanish word depicting an evil man and designed as a Matador-style character very similar to the idea behind Street Fighter's own Vega. But his bullfighter-like appearance never felt quite right. It didn't mesh well with the tone of the rest of the Mortal Kombat series and its combatants. As development progressed, his background as a Matador was dropped completely, and the name Malvado was given a complete overhaul, aligning him more with established characters and aiming towards a darker-looking persona. In the final product, the L was dropped from the name, and Movado was introduced as a warrior with a long black trench coat branded with the image of a red dragon on the backside. His moves were designed around the idea of him being able to maneuver around a 3D environment quickly and unleash surprise attacks by using elastic ropes that stretched and pulled, something quite unique in the Mortal Kombat universe at the time. Su Hao, on the other hand, was envisioned as a secret Chinese operative of Mongol descent with cybernetics implanted into his body to make him stronger. Before receiving a name, Su Hao was labeled as Mongolian Warrior, and when he received his first name, it was Kublai Khan. But instead of being a reference to Shao Khan of Mortal Kombat fame, Kublai Khan was a reference to the real-life Genghis Khan of the Mongol Empire. The final product was a warrior named Su Hao, dropping the Kublai Khan name completely, and he looked like a cross between a rejected member of the YMCA and a North Korean general. His opportunity to stand among the most iconic and legendary combatants of Mortal Kombat was doomed to fail from the start. Even the creators themselves dislike Su Hao, especially John Vogel, Deadly Alliance writer and one of the creators on board from the beginning of Mortal Kombat, wrote Su Hao's death in order to get rid of the character right away. However, since Armageddon brought everyone from the roster back, he had no choice but to reintroduce Su Hao with literally no explanation behind his resurrection. And for those fans hoping for Mortal Kombat 12, The Return of Su Hao, series co-creator Ed Boon himself named Draman and Su Hao as his two least favorite characters, further stating that their returns were fairly unlikely. With the progression of the series, Su Hao has had very little impact in the overall story, and he's been relegated mostly to easter egg and small, quick appearances. He shows up very briefly in the ending for the Joker in Mortal Kombat 11 as an agent of chaos off to the right side, but that's a non-canon ending, belonging to a character that isn't even canon to Mortal Kombat. But endings aside, he does actually appear within Mortal Kombat 11 as a severed head, carried by Aaron Black. There's also a quick, easy-to-miss easter egg where Su Hao's name appears on a billboard advertising watches. This is actually a throwback to Mortal Kombat Armageddon. Su Hao uses his watch to monitor whether his artificial heart's working correctly, and to keep track of when explosives will go off. And it's a collectible found by Taven during Armageddon's conquest mode, Su Hao's watch. 
Suhao's fighting style in game was designed as a stronger, slower style, easily one of my least favorite characters to play as, but his throw is really easy to spam. You could do this in almost every fight and win. He also has a surprisingly effective combo that the AI seems to have a hard time dealing with. On the other hand, he has one of the most useless special moves in the entire series, this powerful jump that misses everything. It's completely pointless to use, you'll jump over everybody. And much like Kano, he also has a piece of technology embedded on his body, ranging from a standard special move to a full-blown finisher. But how did both of these characters become so closely related and what roles did they play in the history of Mortal Kombat? The story begins with the Red Dragon Clan, a secret group that has existed for centuries, founded by the half-god Dagon, brother of Taven, half-brother to Rain. Over time, the Red Dragon Clan became a clan of highly skilled and disciplined warriors tied to a code of conduct of their own, and became involved in assassination missions to further their own agenda, higher jobs, and genetic experimentation. The Red Dragon Clan established their main base of operations in a location known as the Charred Mountains, where an actual Red Dragon, Karo, was held captive since the founding of the clan. At some point in his life, Movado was recruited as a member of the Red Dragons and became its highest ranking member, second only to Dagon. Some of its members eventually became disillusioned with the thought of following the strict rules and guidelines of the Red Dragon and broke off to create their own criminal organization with no honor, no code, and free will to fulfill their own selfish desires, the Black Dragon Clan. One of Movado's and the Red Dragon's top priorities was to eradicate the traitors and wipe the Black Dragons from the face of the realms. Sometime before the events of Mortal Kombat Deadly Alliance, Su Hao worked as a secret operative for the Chinese government and was implanted with an artificial heart and cybernetics by the same cyberneticist that implanted Kano with his artificial eye. Eventually, Su Hao left his career as a government operative and explored the realm, seeking work. In their earliest chronological appearance, Su Hao and Movado cross paths with the young warrior Shujinko, a man on a quest unknowingly being manipulated in order to allow Onaga the Dragon King's resurrection. In his first encounter with Movado, the Red Dragon warrior was seeking coins to build up a stockpile that would support Red Dragon operations, and he negotiated a trade with Shijinko. Later on, a now older Shijinko encountered Su Hao in the realm of Edenia and asked for his help seeking employment, and Movado happened to be looking for a skilled assassin. You are the one known as Shujinko? Greetings. I am Su Hao. I am an assassin and have been searching for someone in need of my talents. Find me employment, and I will pay you a finder's fee. You know of an assassin for hire? I have been searching for such a man to use in infiltrating the special forces in Earthrealm. I am Mavado. Tell this Su Hao to meet me near the waterfall behind the palace. Su Hao became a loyal member of the Red Dragon Clan and answered directly to Movado. Movado came to respect Su Hao as one of his most skilled Red Dragons and chose him for a new mission, the mission to infiltrate Earthrealm's Outer World Investigation Agency, the military group led by Sonya Blade and Jax. The organization was constantly bringing down criminal groups and it was only a matter of time before they would become a problem for the Red Dragon Clan. For years, Su Hao used his previous experience as a Chinese government operative to infiltrate the special forces and gain their trust with valuable knowledge and intel that would help them take down the Black Dragon, never hinting that he had ulterior motives. While Su Hao fooled the special forces, Movado worked to wipe out the Black Dragons and discovered that Cabal had become their new master, reforming the clan. He engaged Cabal in combat and defeated him, taking his prized hook swords as his own trophy and new weapons. Meanwhile, Su Hao continued to follow Movado's orders and revealed his betrayal when he destroyed the Outer World Investigation Agency's headquarters. Now revealed to be a member of the Red Dragon, Su Hao had infiltrated the Special Forces Outer World Investigation Agency and destroyed it with a miniature nuclear weapon. Su Hao escaped and became a fugitive on the run, while attempting to return to the Red Dragon headquarters. During the events in Mortal Kombat Deadly Alliance, the evil sorcerers Quan Chi and Shang Tsung formed an alliance and were attempting to use the immortal army of Onaga the Dragon King to take over the realms. As evil sorcerers do, they were playing multiple sides, and Quan Chi sought the allegiance of Movado and the Red Dragon Clan. 
the blind Special Forces swordsman Kenshi was in Outworld investigating them, and the sorcerers promised if Mavado defeated Kenshi, they would allow Mavado to confront his ultimate target Kano, also working for them. Mavado defeated Kenshi and left him severely injured. With his job complete, Mavado reported back to Quan Chi and Shang Tsung. They fulfilled their promise and delivered Kano's location to Mavado, betrayed by his own employers. With Kano in sight, Mavado battered him in combat, and Quan Chi gave Mavado a warning that the Lin Kuei may become a threat to him in the future. For many years, Mavado's Red Dragon Clan had been secretly engineering the destruction of their rivals, the Black Dragon. Through careful manipulation, Mavado had used the special forces to unwittingly aid them in this task. In return for eliminating Kenshi for the deadly alliance, Mavado was finally granted his battle with the last known member of the Black Dragon, Kano. After a long, brutal fight, Mavado emerged victorious, and all traces of the Black Dragon had been erased. Impressed with the fighting skill and discipline of Mavado, as well as other members of his clan, Quan Chi realized the potential the Red Dragon held for staging the eventual invasion of Earthrealm. In return for their continued assistance, he offered crucial information about a new threat to Mavado's Red Dragon clan, the Lin Kuei. Kano was taken captive by the Red Dragon Clan and held prisoner in the Charred Mountains, and Su Hao had finally made it back to his master. Mavado gave him a new set of orders from Quan Chi to betray and destroy the other half of the Deadly Alliance, Shang Tsung. It seemed that Quan Chi was proving to be a powerful ally and was willing to aid the Red Dragon in its quest for domination of Earth. In a show of good faith, Mavado agreed to destroy Quan Chi's enemies. The sorcerer suspected betrayal from Shang Tsung. There was evidence that Shang Tsung had allied with the two Oni, known as Moloch and Dramen. Su Hao's new orders were to eliminate the sorcerer Shang Tsung before the Oni eliminated Quan Chi. Although fulfilling their missions up to this point, neither Red Dragon would find success long term. Cabal had survived his encounter with Mavado, and with a blind rage, Cabal tracked him down and attacked him. Cabal demanded his hook swords be returned to him, and seemingly killed Mavado. Su Hao never came close to killing Shang Tsung either. Jax finally found him and dispensed justice for his earlier betrayal. Making good on his promise, Jax eventually caught up with Su Hao and ripped the implant from his chest in retribution. Su Hao died a most painful death. Sometime later, before the events of Mortal Kombat Armageddon, the half-god Taven was awakened and began a quest to stop the realms from being destroyed. All of reality was at stake and years of constant combat was undoing the fabric of reality. Armageddon was approaching and the Elemental Blaze offered the ultimate power to control the fate of the universe. During Taven's quest to phase Blaze himself, he discovered the Charred Mountains and found the Red Dragon's hybrid genetic experiments mixing human and dragon DNA and Mavado revealed that he was still alive. Although his battle with Cabal left him injured, the Red Dragon Clan found him and he recovered. Taven met with his brother Dagon before Dagon unleashed one of his greatest assassins on him. The prize will be mine, Taven. I will not risk losing it to you. Grandmaster, please excuse the intrusion. Speak, Mavado. Blaze has been found. Excellent. I must make preparations. See that my brother never leaves this stronghold alive. Taven's strength surprised Mavado, and Mavado escaped before Taven could finish him. The Battle of Armageddon approached, and sides were chosen among all the combatants. Mavado joined the forces of darkness, attempting to claim the power of Blaze alongside Su Hao, who also somehow survived his artificial heart that he needed to survive, being ripped out by Jax. In his non-canon Mortal Kombat Armageddon ending, Mavado defeated Blaze and became the most powerful Red Dragon warrior, and conquered all of Earthrealm with his newfound abilities. Movado felt the fire of Blaze awaken something within him. 
Focusing his mind, he found he could control anyone bearing the Red Dragon symbol. Telepathically guiding his clan in battle, Movado quickly subdued the special forces and the Black Dragon clan. He then tattooed their faces with the mark of the Red Dragon, so they too would serve him. As his forces grew, Movado gained full control of Earthrealm. In Su Hao's non-canon Armageddon ending, he defeated Blaze and became a Netherrealm demon. Killed in the shockwave of Blaze's violent death, Su Hao's corrupt soul descended into the Netherrealm. As his soul began to regain a physical body, Su Hao became his true self, a demon of emptiness and desolation. Leading an Oni horde, he defeated Shinnok and his minions. He now sits upon the throne of the Netherrealm. In the canon version of events, both Red Dragons fought in the final battle, Su Hao seen quickly near the end fighting Johnny Cage on the steps of the pyramid. But ultimately, both perish trying to claim the power of Blaze, failing once again. Shao Kahn defeated Blaze and was about to destroy everything before Raiden sent a message to the past, resulting in an altered timeline being created, taking us back to the original Mortal Kombat tournament. In this altered timeline, Movado and Su Hao both worked their way up as Red Dragon Clan members, becoming close friends and brothers in arms in the process. Instead of Su Hao infiltrating and betraying the Special Forces, Kenshi of the Special Forces infiltrated the Red Dragon Clan and gained their trust. His cover was eventually blown, and Su Hao discovered his betrayal. For his crimes against the Red Dragon, Kenshi became target number one, and the Red Dragon looked for any family connections he had. Unknown to Kenshi, he had a son named Takeda that was being cared for by his mother, and the Red Dragons discovered them. Takeda was sent away, and his mother fought back against the Red Dragons fiercely. At the end of the battle, there were no survivors. The Red Dragons were killed, and so was Takeda's mother. Kenshi discovered the horrific scene and realized in horror that he was too late to rescue her, but his son could still be saved. Kenshi found Takeda, and both were on the run from Su Hao and Movado. The Red Dragon were constantly after the pair, and Kenshi sought to leave Takeda in the safety of the Shirai Ryu, the Clan of Scorpion. Su Hao was responsible for bringing in Kenshi and his son, and the Red Dragon commander finally caught up to Kenshi when an arrow struck through his leg. Su Hao gleefully proclaimed his victory. First they would rip Kenshi apart, and then the boy. But Kenshi would never let Su Hao take his son. He used his telekinetic powers to thrust his sword into Su Hao's cybernetic heart. Something Su Hao expected, and he deflected the blade with his energy. But it was a simple distraction. Kenshi's plan had worked. He purposely crossed over Shirai Ryu territory, an act punishable by death. Su Hao stomped on Kenshi and beat him down, inflicting pain on him slowly and berating him, and Kenshi revealed that he was never hiding. He was simply trespassing. Get over here! Seemingly out of nowhere, Scorpion's kunai plunged into Su Hao's heart at an incredible speed. The Red Dragon was violently pulled towards Scorpion, and with a well-placed thrust of strength, Scorpion's fist went rocketing through his head. Oh! This was the end of Su Hao in the altered timeline, dying before he had any opportunity to claim his glory. With a stern warning, Scorpion gave the Red Dragons one final chance to leave his territory before they all suffered the same fate. Kenshi and Takeda made it safely to the Shirai Ryu, and Takeda was taken in under Scorpion's leadership. Before the events in Mortal Kombat X, Outworld was in a state of chaos. With the defeat of Shao Kahn, Kotal Kahn fought a civil war against Melina and her rebel forces to maintain control of Outworld. Kotal used the services of the Black Dragon Clan, and Melina hired the Red Dragons to fight against her enemies, with Movado leading their forces. At some point during the conflict, the daughters of Johnny Cage and Sonya, and Jax and Vera, Cassie Cage and Jackie Briggs, were kidnapped by the Black Dragon Clan, under orders of gunslinger Aaron Black. Sonya and Johnny traveled to Outworld to find information on their whereabouts, and Movado secretly spied on them from a distance. The Outworld warlord Rico was working on his own plot, and wanted the girls captured alive for himself. If the Black Dragons had the girls, Kano would surely be involved. So Movado had a new objective find Kano, and take the girls as prisoners of the Red Dragon Clan. Jackie and Cassie were a handful for the Black Dragons. They fought back against their captors, and Kano fired a warning shot. If they didn't settle down, the next blast would be their last. Suddenly, Kano noticed movement in the tree line, and the Red Dragon ambush began. 
before Kano stood Movado, demanding that Kano transfer the girls into Red Dragon captivity, and Movado promised to send Kotal Kahn a message written in Kano's blood. Kano made it clear that he doesn't bargain with Red Dragons. Both sides faced each other tensely waiting for the other to strike. Movado had the numbers. The Red Dragon in the area outnumbered Kano's Black Dragon 2 to 1. Kano blasted one, reducing their numbers, and both sides lunged at each other. Cassie and Jackie saw this as an opportunity to run since Movado and Kano were so focused on one another. Kano taunted Movado with the death of Su Hao, reminding him that his friend was killed by a blind guy and another that was once dead. He stabbed Movado in the arm, Kano was shot in the cybernetic eye, both warriors were wounded and tired, and both sides were trying to reclaim the girls, but they fought back. The situation was turning against Kano, and as a Black Dragon does, he escaped through a portal when the odds weren't in his favor anymore, and left Aaron Black behind to be attacked by Movado. Jackie and Cassie opened fire on the Red Dragons, gunning down many of their soldiers successfully. Movado was fast, dodging the gunfire and jumping towards them, demanding that they turn themselves in. Rico may have wanted the girls captured and alive, but he never specified he wanted them in one piece. Movado cut Cassie's arm, and Jackie quickly grabbed him. Movado struggled to get loose, but a quick kick from Cassie broke his leg. He had made a crucial mistake attacking so aggressively, and helplessly fell to his knees before Cassie sliced him open with his own blades. Movado was left on the ground, where he was later discovered by Sonia and Johnny, another 3D-era combatant that met a grisly fate before he could shine brightly in the Mortal Kombat Hall of Fame. But infamy is better than nothing, I suppose. During the end of Mortal Kombat 11, a new era was created. Will this new timeline bring back the Red Dragon Clan and two of its highest ranking members, or will Movado and Su Hao forever be relegated to Easter eggs and small appearances? <laughs> And that is the history of Movado and Su Hao. If you'd like to support my work, I invite you to become a patron. There's multiple levels of support available. Or for an option right here on YouTube, you can become a channel member and gain access to exclusive live stream badges, emojis, and polls. Every dollar helps keep the channel grinding away, and I'd like to thank my current patrons and channel members for their continued support. Don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe and hit the bell for all notifications, and follow me on social media so you never miss a thing. I'll catch you guys later.